Hi, my name is Sandra Roberts and today I'm giving a presentation on the water use of eucalyptus nightens plantations in the Florentine Valley in Tasmania. Before I get started, I just want to clarify some of the terminology that I'll be using, using this simple diagram. Basically, when rain falls on a forest, there are a number of things that can happen to it. Some of it can be intercepted by the canopies of the trees. This means that the rain basically adheres to the leaf surfaces and after the rainfall or even during the rainfall event that water evaporates from those leaf surfaces and represents a loss of water from a catchment. Some of the water also infiltrates the soil where it's absorbed by the roots of the trees and later transpired. Um, this again represents another loss of water from a catchment area. And the third process um, is soil evaporation where water evaporates from the soil surfaces. These three processes combined of interception, transpiration and soil evaporation add up to what I'm calling water use in my discussion today. The other thing that happens to the rain that falls on the forest is that it infiltrates the soil or runs over the soil surface and either becomes stream flow or it recharges soil moisture stores or the groundwater storage. Um, when I talk about available water, this is the water that I'm talking about. It's the water that remains in the catchment and is available for other uses such as ecosystem processes, drinking water or irrigation. So the reason why Forestry Tasmania has been conducting research into plantation water use in Tasmania is because there's quite a bit of existing research that shows that when you change vegetation types, you also change the availability of water. And as an example, if you convert pasture to plantation, what you typically see is a decrease in the amount of water that's available within an area. So this chart that I'm showing you, on the horizontal axis we have the years since a change in, in um, land use occurred within an area. Um, if you look at the columns, where columns are above zero, this represents a time when there is increased water available within an area. If the columns are below zero, it represents a time when there is decreased water available in an area. So you can see that once pasture is converted to plantation, um, that typically there is a decrease in water availability. We also know that if native forest is converted to plantation that there can be changes in water availability. Uh, these changes are less clear cut than for a pasture conversion to plantation. They may actually be an increase or a decrease or the amount of water available could possibly stay around about the same. So here's an example from Cropper Creek in Victoria showing the results when a native forest was converted to pine plantation. And you can see that most of the time after the harvesting and planting occurred that there's been an increase in water supply. The gap that you see in the chart there is because there was no government funding during that period and the monitoring ceased. We have another example which comes from the Karua forests in New South Wales and it shows where a native forest was replaced with the eucalyptus seabari plantation. And in the first approximately 10 years after the, the planting, you can see there's an increase in water supply and this is primarily because the young trees have not yet um, grown to a size where their water use is matching that of the pre-existing forest. But you can see that after about 10 years, you get a, um, a decline in water availability within that, that forest type. So because vegetation affects water availability, it's important that we understand how it can affect water availability so that we can develop good policy and guidelines. So catchment managers, water authorities, other land managers and forest managers really need to get a bit of a handle on the impacts of various management activities on water resources. So Forestry Tasmania has been running a hydrology project for about the last five years and the, the goal of our hydrology project is to develop a tool that enables us to assess the impact of plantations on water availability during the planning process. Our basic approach is to use our existing forest estate model. So our forest estate model is basically an optimisation model that is linked to a database of information about our forest resources. So the database contains spatial information, it tells us what sort of forest or plantation we have located where, when it was planted, uh, what our management objectives are for that area, what species it is, um, any growth data that we may have on that plantation, information about its history, its health, all of those sorts of things are contained in that database. And so what we would like to do is to build water use functions into our 
our forest estate model so that we can simultaneously assess wood production and water use of forests. Um, this could be quite useful because it allows us to enter water as a constraint so that we can figure out how to optimise wood production in a water constrained environment. So the basic way that the um, forest estate model works is that for each planning unit or each area we have that information on growth, species, age, stocking rates, management objectives, um, extent, location and at the moment that information is used to generate a basal area estimate for that planning unit and from the basal area estimate we are able to estimate wood volumes into the future. Now what we're hoping to do with water use is to find a link between basal area or else the diameter lifts that we can generate from basal area to incorporate models on soil evaporation, canopy interception and transpiration so that we can come up with a basal area water use function that we can include into our forest estate model. So as part of the study we've been doing three main things. We've had new field work which has been involving taking measurements of transpiration, canopy interception, soil evaporation, uh, climate and growth of plantations in Tasmania. We're also looking at existing models such as Kabbalah and ProMod that predict not only growth of plantations but also water use of plantations. And we've also been reviewing the existing literature and trying to use existing information where that's available. Our main experiment has been in the Florentine Valley where we've been working in five different eucalyptus nightens plantations. The plantations have ranged in age from 0 to 12 years during the three years of our studies and we've basically just let all the natural events occur in those plantations such as drought, insect attack, um, pruning and thinning operations, any other operations that would normally be conducted as part of the life cycle of those plantations. So the Florentine Valley is located near Medina in about central Tasmania and our five plantations are located in close proximity to one another. Um, they've all been planted in different years starting from 1999 and they are located on pretty similar soil types with similar aspect and slopes so the site's quite uniform and we were very fortunate to be able to find five plantations in a situation like this. So one of the things that we've been measuring is transpiration and we've been using the heat pulse method to measure the sap flow in the trees. And basically what this method does is uses two small thermistors which are inserted into the sap wood of the tree and a heater. And each half hour a pulse of heat is released by the heater and the difference in temperature between those thermistors allows us to calculate the rate at which the sap is flowing through the sap wood of the tree. So if we're also able to estimate the sapwood area of the tree, and if you look at the top right hand side of this slide, you'll see that there's a cross-sectional, um, um, sorry, a cross-section of a stem illustrated, and you can see there's a band of pink around the outside of the stem that represents the sapwood area of the tree. So if we can estimate sapwood area, multiply that by the, the rate of sap flow, we can come up with a volume estimate of the amount of water transpired by trees. Uh, we don't have to cut down all of our trees to measure their sapwood area. We can actually take small cores and we're fortunate that there's quite a strong relationship between basal area and sapwood area. So we can actually just measure the external diameter of the tree and from that we can come up with a pretty good assessment of what the sapwood area of a tree is without destroying it. So here are some of my results. Um, this chart shows um, the age of the plantation versus the amount of water or that the, the plantation is transpiring. Uh, so you can see that as a plantation gets older and the trees become larger, the canopy becomes denser, that a greater volume of water is transpired. You can also see from the red diamonds that when we thin a stand, and thinning simply involves removing about half of the stems in a stand so that the remaining trees have more space to grow, um, that transpiration is diminished for a significant period. We're also looking at transpiration versus basal area relationships. So you can see that's actually quite a good relationship between the basal area of a forest and the amount of water that is transpiring. 
The second process that we've been measuring is canopy interception and canopy interception is determined by measuring rainfall outside the forest and then also collecting throughfall which is the amount of water that falls through the canopies of the tree and lands on the forest floor and also measuring stem flow. Uh, stem flow simply is the amount of water that drains from the trees down the stems and reaches the soil. So if we know what rainfall is we can subtract throughfall and we can subtract stem flow from that and we get an estimate of canopy interception. So canopy interception also increases with age, which is what we would expect as the canopies of the trees develop and thicken. Um, and it's also quite a significant amount in the Florentine Valley, a lot more than I've measured in other locations. And I'm still in the process of checking that there are no errors in that data, so please don't take this as the final result. But you can see once again that when a forest is thinned, that the amount of canopy interception is reduced. Uh, here's an example of the basal area versus canopy interception relationship for the Florentine Valley and once again a good strong relationship um, between the basal area of a forest and the amount of water that those trees are intercepting. The third process we've measured is soil evaporation. It's a little bit harder to determine um, and what we did was we built micro lysimeters. So basically these are 15 centimetre deep PVC tubes which we hammered into the soil to get an intact soil profile. We then sit them in a larger PVC tube with a bucket underneath so that the water can drain through that soil profile. We have a rain gauge uh, which tells us how much rain has fallen. If we know from the difference between rainfall and drainage that there must have been um, some water kept in the soil sample but when we weigh it the soil sample hasn't increased as much as the amount of water's mass would have made it increase then we know that there's been some evaporation from that soil sample. So here's an example of age versus soil evaporation and so you can see that soil evaporation is much higher during the early years of the plantation's growth and that's because largely you have unprotected soil. There aren't canopies shading the soil, wind speeds are higher, typically there's not as much mulch on the soil surface and so far greater soil evaporation occurs. You can also see that later on when the, the forests are thinned from sort of age 8, 9, 10 onwards that soil evaporation increases markedly. And this is an example of basal area versus soil evaporation. Again, quite strong relationships between those two parameters. When I combine all of the data, you get this slightly messy looking chart of age versus water use. There is some year to year variation because each of those plantations were planted in different years. And so what that means is they all have experienced different growing seasons during their lifespan. Some, for example, may have been planted in years when there are exceptionally good growth conditions. Others may have been planted in drought years and done it tough for a while. They may have experienced insect attack or mammal browsing and just not done quite as well. So that variation reflects seasonal differences um, in the growth of those different plantations. We also have a couple of sites where the data is missing um, or some of the data is missing and they sit a little lower on the table. This is actually what we're really aiming for. This is the kind of model that we would like to integrate into our forest estate model. So this is a function between basal area, which we know is already estimated by the forest estate model, and water use. And at the moment, an R squared value of 0 0.64, I'm actually pretty happy with that, um, given that I haven't yet tried to take those seasonal differences in growth into consideration. Uh, the thinned trees sit pretty much on the same relationship. Um, so this is actually a really good start to what we're trying to do. Our next step from here is actually to see whether the relationships that we've seen in the Florentine Valley hold at other sites. So we've set up similar measurements at a site um, at Forest here on the Tasman Peninsula which has lower rainfall and should represent a site that's more water stressed than the Florentine Valley where essentially the trees have as much water as they need. So in conclusion, um, a preliminary analysis of the data shows that there are good functional relationships between growth and water use and they show promise for the development of the forest estate model so that we can simultaneously assess wood and water into the future. Um, we've started undertaking some measurements in the forest here 
um, which will help us to know if our data can be interpolated across a range of different sites or if we need to include um, parameters that tell us more about site quality in our modelling. Uh, we've already tested our models against um, ProMod and Kabbalah and Kabbalah in particular is showing very good promise as a way of, of modelling water use and growth of eucalyptus nightens plantations across a range of sites in Tasmania. And um, in the future, if we're happy with the way that our work in eucalyptus nightens goes, we'd like to replicate our work in other plantation and forest types in Tasmania. Uh, so potentially we would be doing the same sort of work in eucalypt eucalyptus globulus, Pinus radiata and our native forest types. Uh, before I go, I'd like to acknowledge the people that have funded and helped with the project. Uh, the study was funded by Forestry Tasmania, the Tasmanian Community Forestry Agreement and the Forest and Wood Products um, of Australia. Um, we've had a lot of help with the field work. Um, Rebecca Barton-Johnson, Carla Betts, Crispin Marunda and others have, have been instrumental in getting a lot of that work done. And Steve Reid and Paul Adams have provided supervision for the project. Thank you.